a beautiful family. First of all, I know this video topic for many people is going to make them a bit uncomfortable. But the reason these topics make us uncomfortable, for many of us, the reason we don't speak about them, the reason we're not sure about them or don't investigate them, is a great way to see just how deeply programmed and restricted our perception and ability to think is by the system we grow up in. The very notion of other dimensional beings, the notion of angelic beings, extraterrestrials, still to a certain subset of society will result in scoffing and smirking and laughing. And this is programming. This is not the natural way because our ancestry prior to industrial revolution and the programming that came about from the modern civilization, they embraced this. They understood when they looked at the cosmos that there was more to it. And not only that, they interacted with these beings. And now we hear the odd person is interacting. But in the most part, we don't see it. Oh, this is just for gifted and special people. It's for everybody. It's part of what we are when we learn to raise our vibration, when we learn to raise our vibration with, with spiritual works and not worldly works. So when we, when we go and we feel we're raising our vibration by stimulating the body with dopamine hits, entertainment, junk food, this is not raising the vibration. Raising the vibration is finding joy and gratitude with the simplest of things. And so in that higher vibration, beings will come. And recently I've been having interactions with beings that look like humans but are made of blue light. And this isn't the first time. If you've watched me on YouTube for a while, you'll know many years ago now, out in Tanzania, I fell ill after going into an area with no development. It was a valley where everyone was drinking strong banana brew alcohol. And there was a little girl in there who was addicted to alcohol who was two years old called Elizabeth and everybody was partaking in witch doctor religions in that area and we went in and we extracted Elizabeth from there. The following day we then found a boy not far from there and all his body had been sliced and prepared for a ceremony. It's quite dramatic stuff but this is truth, this is reality so we must share these things whether they are comfortable or not sometimes reality is not comfortable and so this little boy was potentially prepared for sacrifice uh, from all the cuts he was prepared for something the following day after that I fell violently ill and started vomiting and didn't stop vomiting to the point where I was vomiting blood and it was horrendous and it felt toxic it felt not like an illness and two times in my life I have vomited blood and both times were close to deep interaction with witch doctor people. Make of that what you will, but I think based on the work where if you send an intention to a human body and then flash freeze the structure of the water around the cell and you see that when you have sent things of beauty and a resonance and a vibration of beauty that the water molecules within us are under the microscope are structured in a beautiful symmetrical way and when you send hate and ferocity they are distorted that alone is enough for me to say that you can by distance affect people with an intention if you are dark enough and send a dark enough intention so as it would happen, my friend started working on me who's Christian and she had done an extraction on me before and I've spoke about this before as well that when she did an extraction on me, she laid her hands on me half an hour later she had a pet chicken and it was fighting a little black snake that it pulled from the skirting board at the bottom of her living room and we said it was just so poignant, the timing was so poignant. So this chicken kills this little black snake just after she's extracted something that was attacking me. 
So she starts working on me and fasting and praying and tells me to call my shaman who married me because she can't work out what to do. So I called my shaman Esther and she arranged a ceremony by proxy. As it would happen by chance or synchronicity as I would rather call it, our friends who were Jean appeared from nowhere and heard what was going on and arranged one of the best pranic healers that they know as traditional Jeans to work on me as well. So I had three faith uh, backgrounds all sending the same healing loving vibration towards me and on that night I listened to some shamanic drumming at a specific time where I was asked to spend some quiet time alone from my shaman while she worked on me and I left my body without any substance I was ill and been fasting because I was vomiting I left my body whilst listening to these drums and I was in Feathers Tail, the children's village and I was moving around without walking and I could see these men humanoid shapes made of blue light and they were blowing on the children and guarding the place was the feeling I got healing, guarding, comforting and then I was pulled up by them and I flew through the sky to Angel's Gate which is like 20 kilometers away from Feathers Tail and I could see the whole journey like I could see the landmarks from the roof that I knew from the road I could see them from the aerial view and it was so detailed that I took it to be a genuine occurrence albeit in the astral sense and so I for the first time saw these blue beings and they were doing the same at Angel's Gate and they were focused more on the traumatized or the severely ill in pain children is what I noticed as well so they have, a been, they have been around in my life and you know when I do what I do I have said very clearly that there are angels sometimes it's the corner of your eye sometimes you just feel it when you go into a room I've had it where you've had the sick and the dying in your arms and a voice says we're here and this happened to me one time I was laid alone and I was holding a dog that was dying and a voice said we are here this dog had suffered awfully for like more than a day dying of uh, a horrible virus and I couldn't find anyone at the time to help to relieve the dog of its suffering so I suffered with this dog and I was praying a lot and I said whoever is responsible for taking these little beings please come and a voice said not long after we are here and I kissed the puppy on the nose and it breathed one last breath just as I'd heard the voice say we are here that's when I did this and it breathed its last breath and this immense peace came over me and I knew there was a force not of this world that had come into this material world and influenced and I'd felt it energetically but this year I started seeing the blue beings as I've called them these beings of blue light uh, definitely loving and angelic and the good guys I would call it they started appearing in my meditation and I've never had mystic visions and journeys whilst meditating this is new to me I, I haven't had this I've had events where things have happened and I've had prophetic dreams uh, which many of you know about but this was new this is this year new when I start it started when I increased when I started to recover a bit I started doing yoga and I got up to doing like two or three hours a day which is quite a lot I know but my body just needed to move and, and it was low impact and I just I needed it but after doing the yoga and fasting and meditating I started doing a guided meditation that the universe kind of dropped at my feet and it's called Blessings of the Energy Centers by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And after fasting and three hours of yoga and 50 minutes into a meditation, they appeared. And the things that were happening were so unreal that I knew I hadn't been creating or imagining them or anything of this nature. I knew these were actual astral events going on. 
And so this has continued and in one instance they came and they poked me in my liver and during the meditation of them poking me in my liver in real life I jumped in pain and they told me to stay with them so I recentered myself and so this has been an ongoing journey and it's taking me down into into things that I didn't know I had like childhood wounds and I'm being escorted into them and this is all part of the healing journey of any human being physical and spiritual and mental and emotional is all intertwined and if you don't love your body your body will find a physical illness to force you into the space to start loving it is what I've learned in my years these last years as well and so they kept turning up now the other day I was Fritzy's aware of this of course and the other day I was out in the forest with Fritzy and the boys and we were on the bicycle and the e-scooter and I stopped and we hadn't been taking any pictures or anything and I never do this and I stopped and I said take my picture right here this is a huge forest <laughs> it all looks the same but I went take my picture right here and even Fritzy was a bit caught off guard why is he asking me to do that but she did she loves me and it's okay John's asked me to take his picture and as she finished taking the pictures my battery died on my phone so we came back home and I opened my phone looked at the pictures and there's this weird blue light in some of the pictures and so I said immediately let me call my friend Tracy because Tracy has taken a lot of photos where weird lights appear inside them and even wrote children's books off the back of this and she has often come to me at times where new but nobody knew the struggles I was in personally and she would call me out of the blue from California and say the other side want to speak to you they have a message for you and the amount of times this has happened is surreal with no hint from me to anyone that there's a problem going on inside me privately she would know and come to me and it's a blessing from God so I made a decision to call Tracy and ask her about this and I haven't spoken to her in over a year and imagine my shock when I open my Facebook and Tracy has written me and she's written me at around about the time that I took the picture and we haven't spoken for over a year and so I sent her the picture and I spoke and she's making a documentary with a guy at the moment who has seen the blue beings and I'm not alone funnily enough I thought that this interaction was maybe personal maybe this is how my subconscious creates the image of angels but I now feel these are actual conscious aspects of the spectrum of consciousness and they love us dearly they really really love us and we are supposed to be able to commune with them We're supposed to be able to speak with them and get help but I'm telling you that they love us undoubtedly and so I see them as definitely connected to source in the very light and beautiful and healing way that many of us want to be and are but imagine that whilst I was doing the Joe Dispenza meditation and I also was doing a lot of uh, shamanic drumming like sometimes two or three hours at night getting into this new state that I found myself in where I was having these journeys and I would get insights and and I would come out of it feeling healed and, or some trauma from my childhood or the last years or some element of grief would be unpicked and I was watching Joe Dispenza healing testimonials on his YouTube and a woman said she saw beings of blue light and she's the only one I've seen who said it and then I heard Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza saying that he could see them in the corner of the room sometimes in the group workshops and I'm telling you these beings they love us but the problem is and the reason people are so skeptical is that people think they know everything and so it's pure ego to think like that this species with a very primitive scientific advancement that we are we're not long out of the forest you know we're, we're, we're really fresh we just think we know everything but we're really fresh our, our medicine is weak our transportation systems are weak 
you know our cities are, uh, are based on 2d transport with 3d living you know everything about our society is new and fresh and, and primitive and yet we enter a state where we think it's not we think that we know and this is just the collective egotism of society this is why we destroy nature instead of trusting instead of connecting to it and trusting its direction for us as an expression an extension of we separate from that and say we are alone we are an isolated collective ego stuck on this rock and this is not how we reconnect this is not the, the reality of things so if you're not seeing them it's akin I see to the work that those of us who have raised our vibration do. So those of us who have raised our vibration and we feel I can give love here and I can help people to come up from the density of the suffering that I've known myself and others that are in. And so we can do that but if you spend too much time lowering your vibration to go and help people, if you're constantly with uh, drug addicts who were stealing from you. In my instance, I had children who we loved so much, but they were stealing from us and, and, and they would hurt a lot. And if you keep just exposing yourself to it, it slowly ebbs your vibration down. And eventually you have to build a boundary between you and the low vibration or you can't help anybody anymore. And that's what happened with me. And this is no different to these beings. They love themselves, guys, just as we do. And unless we go up into their vibration by entering the presence, the light of silence, the stillness, the, the stillness that these trees exist cocooned within. If you just watch a tree, and you just you feel and sense its stillness. Don't intellectually agree the stillness, but feel it. That's where they'll turn up because that's where you're raising your vibration. That's where you're elevating the frequency of yourself to something that they can stomach something that they can come to and meet you at instead of feeling burnt out by coming down to your low vibration that would burn them out <clears throat> and this is the reality of it now what are these beings in the sense of how I've spoken over the years I've said you know an angle of light has photons that carry themselves upon the angle of light and photons contain information so an angle of light that hits me with a photon can be deemed a messenger of light if you change the language and so these messengers of light are coming and they do take form and they do take conscious form and, and they do move in the ether in the framework in the the aura in the in the the Gaia presence that's all around you but rarely gets to influence you they are there and I had this weird thing last week where I took this picture and this blue light that was in the picture looks exactly as they did in my visions and so who are they are they ETs are they angels are these just labels does it matter <laughs> so long as they are here to support and to help and to join those of us in humanity who see clearly a need to raise the vibration of the planet of the species they're there they're in agreement with that and this brings me great comfort because I know I know their presence brings me the same love and the same presence that I've felt in the depths of fasting with sauce and so I know they're an extension of sauce or maybe a digestible means of communicating that there's something else there I, I, I don't know I don't have all the answers but it's because I don't know and I don't have answers I feel that I'm able to surrender and have these events happening because it takes a lot of freedom of the tension that feeling that you know what to do that feeling that you know the answers this creates so much tension that you can't possibly get into that vibratory space but when you let go of that and you agree to surrender oh, then I, 
I no longer know what the next... <laughs> I don't know what the next part of these journeys will be. But it just reminds me more and more how small I am and how little I know. When after all these years in service and meditation and fasting and prayer, that now, this year, all that time in, now when I go into these certain meditations, I am in the presence of blue angelic light beings of some description. And I am not hallucinating, I'm not delusional, they are legitimate. And things that happen in the meditation are confirmed in real life scenarios the following day. Something I'll be told will come to pass. Something I'll be warned about will come to pass and I'm grateful. I'm grateful that God allows us these tools to to guide and and to move our lives. And some people don't get the same visions. I I, I don't know. I don't know if they have a a space in the cosmos that they belong to. Or if it's the Holy Spirit, as it said, coming in a form that you can accept, I, I don't know. And I, I shan't diminish or pollute it by pretending that I do. But I do know one thing, that they're helping us to do what we do. And this is a reality. I don't need a picture to, to know they are there. totally fascinating world that we live in when you realize that you don't even know the potential of the vehicle that you're in man I have no idea what the future holds but I've put it out there now anyway God bless guys bye Oh gosh, I'm sure there'll be some raised eyebrows in this one. <laughs>